The Bible starts in Genesis 1-1, which says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That scripture shows that God is the creator of all things. After that came Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve made the bad choice of eating the fruit off the tree of life that allowed sin to enter the world. And soon that sin got so bad that God just decided to destroy the earth. But he saved the one righteous family, the family of Noah. And so after Noah came Abraham. And Abraham had such great faith that God rewarded him with being the father of many nations. And so after Abraham came Moses. And Moses led God's people out of Egypt and through the desert during hard times. And, and he was a great leader and he loved God. And after Moses came the period of the judges. And at that time, the Israelites were getting into a cycle where they would fall away from God, trouble would come, and they would cry out to God. And God, being the loving God that he is, would send a judge to rescue them. And that was God's way of letting the Israelites have a leader. He didn't want them to have a king or a queen like all the other nations of the world because he wanted his people to be different. So he used judges instead of kings. And there were many great judges like Gideon and Samson and Samuel and Deborah. And, but soon the Israelites got greedy and they wanted a king too. And so they told Samuel, who was the judge at that time, that they wanted a king. And so Samuel went to God in prayer about it. And God said, anoint Saul king over the Israelites and let them see what he would do to them. So Samuel did what God said, and Saul was a pretty bad king, too. And so after Saul came David, and David loved God with his whole heart and wrote almost the whole book of Psalms, which is praise to God and how he delivers people from his enemies. And, and so after David came Solomon, and Solomon and one night God came to Solomon in a dream and he asked him for anything that he wanted. He could even have all the splendor of the world if he wanted to. But Solomon didn't ask for riches. He asked for wisdom. And God blessed him through that. And Solomon also built the temple for praise to God. And after Solomon, the kingdom split into two parts. Israel and Judah. And Israel's kings were bad all down the line, like Jeroboam and Nadab and Ahab. And Judah's kings were pretty much the same, although they did have a few good kings, like Asa and Josiah and Hezekiah. And also at that time, the Israelites were getting into that same kind of cycle with the judges. But instead of sending a judge, God sent a prophet. And prophets would tell about the future and what would happen if the Israelites didn't turn, didn't turn back to God. And some, like Isaiah, even told about Jesus, the coming Savior. And after all the kings and the prophets, there were 400 years of which nothing was recorded in the Bible. And then the Bible starts back in the New Testament. And Jesus was born into the world, and he taught and told parables and did miracles so that we might believe in God and turn back to Him. But that wasn't all God had in store for His Son. He wanted Him to die on the cross for our sins. So that's what Jesus did. He took all of our sins upon us so that, he, so that we wouldn't have to die for them. And then to show His power over death, God raised His Son back up from the grave and so after Jesus had ascended into heaven and gone back to live with God, the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples and they started to teach and preach in, diff in different languages. And also at that time there was a man named Saul. And Saul, was, and Saul, what he thought was right was to beat Jesus' followers. And if he didn't have them beaten, he had them thrown in jail or even killed. And on his way to a city called Damascus, God blinded him with a bright light, and Jesus called out from heaven, Saul, why are you hurting me? And so that bright light blinded Saul, 
And so God called Ananias to teach and preach to Saul about God. And later Saul was baptized and, he, and, he, and his sight returned. He also changed his name to Paul. And Paul went around to many countries teaching and preaching about God's word. And he, and he was really in depth about it. And he wrote a good portion of the New Testament about all those letters to God's people like Galatians and Ephesians and Philippians and all these other letters. And also at that time, James and Jude and Peter and all these other people were writing letters to God's people also. And then after all those letters, then John wrote one final letter to the seven churches in Asia about a vision that he had. And that's where Revelation comes in. And, Revela and Revelation is all about John's vision of what would happen in the end. God would destroy the earth separate the people into two groups, one group being the people who chose to not obey God and not serve Him, and the other group would be the people who did follow God. And so, um, and so God would be victorious over evil, and Satan and all his followers would be thrown into the lake of fire, but the people that obeyed God and served Him would be rewarded with eternal life in heaven. And so think of the Bible as a movie. And you wouldn't just rent a movie and go to scene selection and say that this part looks interesting, I'll start here. Because then you don't know who the characters are, what they're doing, why they're doing it, and where they are. So just like you have to watch the whole movie to get the whole picture, you have to read through the whole Bible to see what God say. Because if you read one book, you might think that God's waiting for us to mess up because he's getting his people in trouble all the time. And if you read another book, you might think that he has all this love and compassion toward us, and you get confused. And so, and so I've learned a lot during Project 4-4, and I hope you have too. It's been a great experience.